Hey Jay, I don't know whether this question's already been asked or not, um, but why did you guys decide to come back? Like in my reading of the pageant messages and uh, the life of Lysian, etc., uh, it, it seems that, that things unfold as they're going to anyway. Like, I suppose this question's intellectually, why do you need to come back and hurry things along? Um, well, we're not coming back to hurry things along, for a start. Um, the problem is, is that um, in between the time when I was on the first century and now, there has been no one on earth who has been at one with God. And we tried to help lots and lots of people to become at one with God while we were in the spirit world. But in the spirit world, you were severely hampered helping people on earth to become at one with God. And I'll explain why, firstly. Let's imagine that here's the person you would like to assist to become at one with God. Now that person has a whole group of moral issues. In other words, they have a belief system based around morals. For instance, some of them believe that you should only have one husband. Some of them, on the, even on the planet today, believe you're allowed to have five wives, don't they? So that there, there's all these moral conditions that are very different. Moral also in terms of some people believe it's okay to lie. Some people believe it's okay to steal. Some people believe it's all of those, all of those things are okay. So there's a whole different set of moral conditions in the individual. Then there's a whole set of beliefs in the individual. So the beliefs might be beliefs about God, beliefs about the universe, beliefs about child rearing, beliefs about you know, how we should use our life, beliefs about desire and passion, and all these different belief systems that we have, some of which are harmonious with love and harmonious with the way God created us to be, and some of which are very disharmonious with love and very much, uh, you know, based around fear, if you like. Then we have a whole set inside of this same person, we have a whole set of emotions. And those emotions range from love on one end of the scale right around to the deepest terrors on the other end of the scale. And in between that there's hatred, anger, rage and all these other different emotions all within one individual on the, on the, on the planet. Can you see also that uh, there is all these different beliefs about love which, which we'll call them love beliefs and we'll separate them from normal beliefs. Normal beliefs, let's focus on the beliefs of the universe and life and all those kind of beliefs. But we also have a whole set of love-based beliefs. Like some of us believe that it's loving to help somebody out no matter what they've done. Others believe, no, it's not loving to help a murderer. You know, it just depends, doesn't it? Everyone has a whole different set of belief systems. Now, not only that, on top of this, so this is what's inside the person. On top of that, that person, because of their own law of attraction, has a whole set of spirits that they attract around them, who are around them. They might be male or female spirits, right, who are around them. And every one of those spirits around them has a whole set of morals, beliefs, emotions, and all these kind of things, which are influencing this person. And of course, this person also has usually a set of religious beliefs. And I would even classify an atheist as having a religious belief. And that is a religious belief based that they feel there is no God. An agnostic has a religious beliefs. In other words, they feel they don't know how, how anything works. But that's still a belief. Does that make sense that we hold on to? Now, all of these belief systems are present in the person. And then we've got all of these spirits surrounding this individual who are also in the same set or a whole different set of belief systems but influencing the person. And then there's a person up here who knows the truth. And now there are literally millions and millions of spirits who are above the eighth sphere, so from the eighth sphere and above, or what the Paget messages refer to as the celestial kingdom. They know the truth. They are trying to influence this person. But can you see it's like trying to influence a person with a heap of truth through a heap of fog, like and a heap of like smoke and, you know, there's all these different things going on for this person. And you're trying to give them these truths, but how, how, do, you, how do you do? You can't actually be in their face doing it. 
because at the moment there are some limitations that God's placed on the interaction between humankind and the spirit world. And you can't, uh, so you can't influence them directly by grabbing them by the scruff of the neck and sitting them down in front of you and saying, now hang on a sec, you know that moral, that moral belief you have that you can look at any woman you like as long as you only go to have sex with your wife, that is actually an immoral belief. You know, that's actually out of harmony with love. You can't sort of grab them as a spirit and say that. But here on earth, you can. You can actually get an audience together like this if anybody wants to listen to you. And you can then say, here's a moral belief that's out of harmony with love. Here, here's one of them. Here's another one of them. Here's another one of them. And it will enter the person's mind. Might not enter their heart at the time, of course. But at least it at least enter, enters their intellectual awareness. And what we realised after a while was that most of the problems in the spirit world come from, and in fact actually all of the problems in the spirit world, come from our life here on earth and the choices that we make that are out of harmony with love here on earth. Now as a spirit, when you're looking at all this happening, what you want to do is start addressing the causal emotional reasons why there's all this pain and suffering. But the only way you can do that is by actually starting to address the causal emotional reasons inside of an individual at the time that the causal emotional things are being created. And that happens here on earth. So almost every spirit who's in the seventh sphere or in the eighth sphere or above has this really passionate desire to help any person here on the earth in any way they can. Now, when myself and Mary arrived in the 22nd sphere condition, for the first time we realised that we were that we were now able to return to earth. Before you get to that condition, you're not able to return to earth. So before that condition, you feel in a way a little frustrated in the sense that you know the causal emotional condition is being created here on earth because people have walked away from God here on earth. You know all of these things exist in the person on earth, but you're really struggling to influence them positively. And on top of that, you have a passionate desire to help them as much as you can. So when you get to the place where you can actually now like conceive what it's like to actually return and per perhaps be able to help people in a totally different way than you have been for 2,000 years, it's a high likelihood you would have taken it as well, the opportunity. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'm guessing like simple maths, if you can help help one person here on earth, you also affect numerous spirits. Yes. Attached and watching, etc., etc. Exactly. And, and not only that, all it needs in the end is one person here on earth to become at one with God again. That's really all we need. Once we have one person who becomes at one with God on earth, millions of people will notice that, just like people noticed in the first century. Does that make sense? And once you have one, there's a high likelihood of you having two, <laughs> and then having three, and then having four, and then having ten, and then having a hundred. Right? But if no one's... Like in 2,000 years of experimentation, this is what it was like for us, for 2,000 years of experimentation, we tried to assist people to even listen to the truth, let alone write it down or practice it themselves. And the only person in that 2,000 year period that we ever got to listen to us to an open enough extent to write down a quite a number of truths was James Paget, actually, in that entire period of time. Now, we had other experiments happening all at the same time and uh, many, many hundreds and thousands of experiments happening all through that historical period. But the only one that in the end was quite successful was that one. But even though that was successful, how many of you had ever heard of James Paget before you met me? Like hardly anyone was there who, who, who would be in that condition. And so, and so can you see how even though the truth was available, there was no one actually living it. And when there's no one living it, then the truth doesn't actually ever get distributed to others. It's only by the power of you living the truth that things actually change. So all of this is essentially driven by your desires to, to bring truth to others. Yeah, and, and my desires, and I've learnt to do this with God, to bring my desires... When, when, um, if I can give you a little bit of background before I say what I was going to say. Um, 
when you activate your pure desires in a way that's harmonious with love all the time, you at that moment are being what God created you to be. Does that make sense to you? So, so for example, if you've grown up with music all of your life and then you passionately get into music and you just really sink yourself into it and you're passionate about it, you will become successful with music. People will get to know you. If you have a pure desire with it, you will, people will get to know you and this passionate desire will go through the rest of your life, even after you pass from earth into the spirit world. And the more you bring yourself into harmony with that passionate desire, the more you're being yourself. And so what I learned myself was that as long as I exercise my passionate desire, and my passionate desire has always been to connect firstly to God as like I understood from my own background and my own readings in the first century that, it, that I could actually become at one with God, like being in this unique condition, and that every single person who's ever lived also has the potential of doing, being in that condition. And, but I realised that nobody had. And after a while, once I developed that passion and followed that passion to the end, what happened was I realised that passion inside of myself, which meant that now all of this truth could come through to me because I'm now at the state where I was at one with God and now all that truth can come through me and be distributed to others. Now many of you will have the same passion in your future. Uh, many of you already do have a passion for truth. Is that not the case? So, so many of you will activate this passion for the truth so much that, that you will so passionately desire the truth in your own life that you will live it. And when you live it, you will automatically attract everyone around you who wants to listen to the truth, will be drawn to you as a result of you living it. So it's not as a result of you speaking it, it's as a result of you living it emotionally that things change. And once you understand that, you realise that even if you're up here and you're still progressing, you're still living it, so you're still progressing, you get to the point where you now have, see the potential of helping every single person who's ever lived with regard to truth. The majority of you in that position would have taken the same choice that myself and Mary took, I'm sure, right? once you're in that space. Now, one of our emotions that we were going through today was we regret making that decision at times. <laughs> so Mary had quite a long cry today about uh, regretting that decision. Um, but in the end, um, that's one of the emotions that we just need to work our way through, just like any other emotion, the emotion of having lost what we had. The problem for us is we remember what we had and how that felt, and we feel now like we've lost that. And obviously we haven't lost it, it's just a process of processing through that emotionally to recover it, but we feel we've lost it, so we've got to go through that emotionally. But for the majority of people, if they were in the position where they are at the, you know, the pinnacle, if you like, of your development in love, for the majority of people in that position, if you had the opportunity now to help billions of people rather than just a few people, as you had been before, then I'm sure you would take that opportunity. So while I helped millions of people get into the celestial heavens, um, there is still billions of people in the other spheres of the spirit world who are who are not yet at one with God, who are not yet enjoying the things that I've enjoyed in the, in the past in the spirit world, and, and I would love them to at least have the opportunity to have that experience. Now, when I was in that state and when Mary was in that state, we together can feel God's intention. And what will happen is you, as you progress on the divine love path, you will come more and more to feel God's intention. And you will have a choice to either bring your intention in harmony with God's intention or just to do your own thing. Now what myself and Mary have chosen is to bring ourselves into harmony with God's intention. And one of God's intentions was for this period of time to be a time of change. So the time that we're living in right now is a critical key time for humanity. It's not what the Christians foretell, and that is, you know, me coming on a cloud with all my army destroying the wicked and setting up a paradise at conditions on earth, nothing like that. And it's not what other religions foretell in it of cal calamitous events. 
that, uh, but there are a mixture of things that are going to occur this period of time. And the mixture of things include economic, total economic change. Another thing includes total um, upheaval of the earth itself because of the damage that's being done to it from our soul condition. And, and so there's a lot of things that are going to happen over your lifetime if you live over the next few years um, that, that will be a part of the changes that need to occur. And what, what we are doing with you is a, is a large part of those changes. At the moment that's not well known but it will become more and more well known as these changes come onto the planet. So, so we could see God's intention and we ourselves had a desire to also be a part of that plan of God, if you like, and because of that chose to return and start this process at this particular period of time. And, and this particular period of time is the best time because this is the period of time for, for multitudes of reasons that humanity is beginning to change. Um, for example, I don't know if you're aware, but scientifically time and space is compressive. In other words, it can be compressed and it can expand. And what's happening now is a speeding up of time in, a, in an emotional experiential sense. Now many of you are starting to realise that in your own life. Decisions that would have taken you 10 years to make before, you're making in a week. You know? How many of you 10 years ago would have easily given up your house to move to another house? But today, many of us moved within one year four or five times. Just bang, 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 because it wasn't suitable or whatever. How many of us would have easily moved out of relationships? You look at the previous generation of people, often they had bad relationship, but they never moved out of it their entire life. They stayed in it until they died. Now it's very rare for a person to stay in a relationship that's destructive to them for their entire life because things are speeding up, things are changing. And this is all a part of what God has planned. And while, while God has everything under control and I, I don't have anything under control, I can assist God's plan through my desire or I can try to make it not happen through my desire. Now, obviously, God's God, and if I try to make it not happen through my desire, I really haven't got much chance at all, right? Because I'm really fighting against God. But if I exercise my desire harmonious with love and harmonious with God, I will enjoy the many beautiful things that God gives to those who exercise their desire in harmony with God's laws. And that's what I've personally experienced in my life and that's one of the things that we wanted to teach as well. So there's a whole multitude of reasons why we've returned. Um, but obviously, and many of them I've yet to explain, um, even though I've spoken for 300 hours to groups of people that are recorded, um, there's still many of those things that I've yet to explain. And of course can't be explained until the people who are listening are ready to hear what needs to be said. But that is all a part of what will happen in the future. Mm.